feel better. Take some I'll aspirin work. or something. Hope you get better, okay? Chrissy. Yes, sir. You're a visitor now. We are glad <laughs> you are with us. I'm happy to see you, everyone. Okay. Hello, Chrissy. <laughs> My prayer request? Prayer request. Um, um, healing for everyone that that uh, includes our family in Christ and also uh, thanksgiving for all the blessings that we receive every day. Okay. Ramon, you with us? Hello, Ramon. Yes, brother. Good morning. My prayer request, Kaba. Yes, the same thing. We are happy to be with you, but uh, we are praying that all our brethren is in good health, in good condition, continuing serving to the Lord. And we are hoping that there will be uh, peace Okay. I'll over there. Very good. Uh, Marvin, give us our prayer, please. You didn't ask Marvin for prayer. He's since he's doing the prayer, he can do the prayer request as he goes by. All right, let us bow our head. Um, dear Father, please help us to receive your eternal wisdom by opening our thoughts so that we can recognize your guiding and direction. Please open our spirits and let your love let your love enter our hearts so that we may receive it. You are the source of blessing and mercy is in you. Our family members are still in our prayers. Sir Ernest, Brother Pedro, Sister Glendy, Brother Danny, uh, Sister Lita, and Sister Katrina. Um, may you lessen their suffering and their load. We place everything in your hands because we trust we trust you to act in our best interest. All of this is being asked in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody, open your Bibles to Revelations chapter 16. Revelations chapter 16. Revelations chapter 16. Marvin, give us verse 11, please. Unmute, please. Revelations chapter 16, verse 11 says, And curse the God of heaven for their pain and sores. They did not repent of their deeds okay verse 12 please Wilma verse 12 the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates and its Euphrates. water Euphrates 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 and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east Verse 13, Cora. Verse 13 says. Unmute, please. Verse 13, it says, Then I saw three impure spirits that looks like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophets. 14, Chrissy. Verse 14 says, for they are demonic spirits performing signs who go abroad to the kings of the whole world to assemble them for the battle on the great day of God, the Almighty. 15, Katrina, please. Verse 15. Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake, keeping his garments on, that he may not go about naked and be seen exposed. 16, Giselle, good morning. Good morning. Revelations chapter 16. 
Verse 16, please. Revelation 16. 16, 16. Okay. What verse, sir? 16, Revelation 16. 16, 16. And they assembled them at the place that in the Hebrew is called Armageddon. There you go, Armageddon. Uh, Ramon, verse 17, please. The seventh angel poured out his mouth into the air, and out of the temple came a loud voice from the throne saying, It is done. It is done. Now, going back, who's, who's Wilma? Okay, going back to verse 11, let's take, it, let's take our text apart for this morning and take a look. We'll notice that in verse 10, which we didn't read today, we read last week, that the people of Rome were being tested. And uh, we notice in verse 11 that they blasphemed. They would not repent because their false religious belief had led them to misinterpret the devastation of their government and the environment. They had assigned this judgment that they thought were forces of evil and thus failed to recognize that it was God who was chastising them for their wickedness. God had allowed them to believe the lie, but in the end, their belief in the lies of the false religion would not move them to repent in response to the judgments of God. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse 10, please, Marvin. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse 10. Yes, please. Are we all there? All right. Second Thessalonians chapter two, Two verse ten says, and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Okay. Verse eleven, please, woman. Verse eleven. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion, so that they may believe what is false. Okay. Verse twelve, Cora. Unmute, please. Verse 12 says, and, and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wickedness. So what we see here is what is actually occurring in Revelations chapter 16 and verse 11. We see that God has allowed them to be deluded. And by the way, so it is today. The foundation of the false religions that take their security in tradition or the misguided emotions of so-called religious people who trust in these traditions or emotions. Such becomes their validation for their false religions who have long ago forsaken the word of God. If God's word contradicts either tradition or emotions or emotionalism in such religions, more often than not, it is rejected. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't feel right to me. Uh, verse 12, on the great Euphrates, the great Euphrates obviously is a river. Uh, this is a figurative of the barrier between Rome and her hostile enemies to the east. We saw that in Revelation chapter 9, verse 14. And this may also refer to the Parthians and other enemies of Rome like them. Here, they are allowed to begin the destruction of the empire. 
they are allowed to do such by victorious battles against the extremities or outlying areas of the empire that could not be defended. In verse 13, we're starting a new section, and in this section, there's an interlude, and much is the same with previous visions. The events of these verses stand between the sixth and the seventh bowls. These unclean spirits, these are the false religious beliefs that come forth from Satan, or the dragon, who is the source of all lies. John chapter 8, verse 44. Chrissy, John 8, 44. Is it John 8, 24? 8, 44. John 8, 24 says, I told you that you would die... No, for, not 24, 44, Chrissy. Ah, 44. John 8, 44 says, You are of the father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character for he is a liar and the father of lies. So who is the father of all lies, Chrissy? The devil. The devil. Now, so when we hear people talk about little white lie, what are they doing? Still lying. They're lying, they're still lying, right? Yes, yeah, still lies. Okay. So what we see here in Revelations chapter 16 is that Satan is the source of all lies. Satan's greatest weapon against humanity is to direct religious beliefs and inclinations of men away from God. By focusing these religious beliefs and the behavior of religious men on that which is false. Satan sues the consciences of men, and thus he deceives them into rejecting the word of God. And we've already looked at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 to 12, and Mark chapter 7, verses 1 to 9 is a little bit of a long read for us this morning. Revelation 16, 14, performing signs. These remind me of the signs that were performed by the people who worked for Pharaoh as Egypt got ready to leave. Um, Israel got ready to leave Egypt and uh, Moses and Aaron were performing their signs, but most of these were duplicated by the agents that worked for Pharaoh. Um, the supernatural power that can only come from God. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. Matthew 24, 24, Katrina. Matthew 24, 24 says false Christ and false prophets perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray if possible even the elect there will be false signs and false wonders performed by Satan so when you hear somebody say well there's a miraculous power does that mean it necessarily comes directly from God no okay Satan has the ability to perform signs, and we saw that in Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9, Gasell. Second Thessalonians. 
second Thessalonians. What, sir? Chapter 2, verse 9. Verse 9. For you remember, brothers, our labor and toil. Uh, this is, you're reading the wrong Do verse, please. Giselle. Second Thessalonians, chapter 2, okay. verse 9, please. Okay. The coming of the lawless, one is by the activity of Satan with all powers and false signs and wonders. So if I, you looked at me kind of shocked, Giselle, when I told you earlier that Satan had the ability to perform miraculous signs. Yes. But however, scripture tells us that is absolutely true. Uh, Mary Faye, good morning. Good morning, sir. I'm sorry for being late. No problem. First Timothy chapter four, verse one. First Timothy. Am I going to read it? Yes, please. First Timothy. First Timothy chapter four, verse one. The spirit yeah. clearly says that in later times. Some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Wow. Some teach in later times, the spirit clearly says that in later times, people will depart the faith and do what? Follow the things that are being taught by the demons. Those who have these types of spirits, those fickle spirits, they will be misguided and they will follow after the supposed wonders of clever men who seek to gain the confidence of the innocent. Because of this ever present danger among men, all saints, by the way, Mary Faye, did you know you are Saint Mary Faye? We are all saints. <laughs> we are all saints and you are Saint Mary Faye, okay? Uh, the saints, we have to equip ourselves with the knowledge of the word of God. Ephesians chapter 4, let's start in verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Ramon, would you get that for us, please? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Okay. And? Go ahead. Ephesians 4, 11. Just wait here. Eleven. It was the it was he who have given some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. Okay. 11, 11. You're reading, that's 11. You're reading the King James Version. Uh, am I correct, Mike Ramon? No, international, new international version. New international. Okay. Because that's because I saw the word pastor and I'm used to, I didn't think about the NIV. Uh, verse 12, please, Marvin. Verse 12, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the the body of Christ. 13, please, Wilma. 13. Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood. 14, please, Cora. 14, it says, then we will no longer be infants, those back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teachings and by the cummings and crafting of people in their deceitful scheming. 15, please, Katrina. Verse 15, rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. Okay, 16, yourself. Together by every joint with which it is equipped. When its part of is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself 
up in love. Okay. So our, when we, by the way, we know the five steps to being reborn, right? Yes. What is the sixth step? To continue to grow, to mature, to become the men and women that God wants us to be, right? So that we are no longer, as we're told in Second Thessalonians, tossed to and fro. So that Ephesians tells us so that we are no longer swayed by every new doctrine that comes along. Uh, one of the things we see in Revelations chapter 16 is it talks about the kings of the whole world, the deceived rulers of the Roman government throughout the empire had given their allegiance to Rome. They had given their allegiance to the false prophet of the Roman imperial religion, and therefore they are aligned with Rome and against the truth of God that is believed and proclaimed by the saints of God. The battle of that great day in the war of truth against error, the forces of evil have deceived themselves in believing that, into believing that they have God on their side. But the God they have on their side is only an invention in their mind. They deceive themselves into a creating a religion after their own desires, a God after their own image, if you will. They have allowed Satan to twist their religious inclinations to form a humanistic religion that conforms to their political ambition and their lust of the flesh. They have therefore set themselves against God of heaven by setting uh, themselves against the sons of God that are here on the earth. As we move into Revelations chapter 16 and verse 15, I am coming as a thief. God's judgment come as a thief on those who have deceived themselves into believing false religions. Because the righteous know that God comes in judgment, they are prepared. He will not come upon the righteous as a thief because they will always be ready and waiting for the coming of the Lord. Matthew chapter 24, verse 43. Matthew 24, 43. Chrissy. Matthew 24, verse 43 says, But now, but know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. If you knew when the thief was coming... Would you just go away and let him come? You what do you think, prepared. Kat? You no. will be prepared for it. Yep. You're prepared for it. We yes. need to be prepared for the return of Jesus Christ all the time. We need to be prepared for the return, the time for us to go, if you will, to be ascended into heaven at all times, because you've all heard me say this before, the return of Christ is coming, and it may or may not come during our lifetime, so the end of the world will happen, but the end of the world is not the important event we should be focused on, is it? Mary Fay, what event should we be focused on? End of our world. The end of our world, because we know that's coming, right? Yes, for sure. <laughs> that's going to be here pretty quick. Uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 39. Go ahead and get that for us, please. Mary Faye? Luke, uh, Luke chapter 9. No, Luke chapter 12, verse 39. Luke chapter 12, verse 39. 
verse 39. It says here, but understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. Now, that's parallel to the Matthew 24, 43, right? Yes. And much the same as we spoke about on Sunday. When God says something twice or three times, we better, under, we better circle it and highlight it, right? Because it's like your parents. If mom says it once, you should do what she says. If she says it to you two or three times, you need to really pay attention, right? First yeah. Thessalonians chapter five and verse two, please. First Thessalonians chapter five and verse two, Ramon. Pardon, Brad. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse two. Five two. Now, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief of the night. And go ahead and give us verse four to go with that, Ramon. Now, brothers, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are seeing peace and safety, destruction will come and then suddenly a labor pain on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. It's going to happen all at one time. We're not promised that we're going to have years to get it ready. Jesus Christ, in fact, tells us he will return in the twinkling of an eye. And most of us have blinked in the last 15 seconds, whether we're aware of it or not. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. Marvin. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. It says here, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. And then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Okay. Now, going back, what we see is that the return of Christ is going to happen quickly, suddenly, and permanently, right? By the way, the end of our world could very much be the same. Going back to Revelations chapter 16, verse 15, are we surprised that the Apostle John, when he said, blessed is he who watches? No, because scripture is full of warnings that the judgment is going to come suddenly. The righteous people, they are going to watch. They are going to remain prepared. However, Rome and all of her false religionists, they are unprepared for the fate that is coming upon them. And really ask yourself, is there any difference today? Obviously, this reference is the final coming of Jesus Christ. And those who refuse to believe the truth of God will be unprepared for the coming final judgment of God. Keeps his garments, in other words, be ready. Armageddon or Armageddon, depending on which manuscript you're looking at. In the Old Testament, there is no geographic religion that is tied to Armageddon or Armageddon. However, some believe that this is in reference to the mountain of Megiddo, which is located in Palestine. Uh, Judges chapter 1, verse 27. Judges chapter 1, verse 27. Marvin, I think you just finished. Uh, Wilma? 
Yes, chapter one, verse twenty seven. Man Manesse did not drive out of inhabitants of Bethsien and its villages or Tainak and its villages, or the inhabitants of Dor and its villages, or the inhabitants of Ibliam and its villages, or the inhabitants of Megiddo and its villages. For the Cana Canaanites persisted in dwelling in that land. Okay. Now, they believe that the mountain that is mentioned in Judges, Megiddo, is going to be there are those who believe that that's where the battle of armageddon is going to be uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit more judges chapter 5 and verse 19 judges chapter 5 and verse 19 cora judges chapter 5 verse 19 it says King came, they fought. The kings of Canaan fought. At Tanakh, by the waters of Megiddo, Mage they took no plunder of silver. Okay. They took no plunder. Uh, Katrina, give us 2 Chronicles 3522, please. Chronicles. Thirty-five twenty-two, right? Thirty-five twenty-two. Second Chronicles thirty-five twenty-two says, "Nevertheless, Josiah did not turn away from him, but disguised himself in order to fight with him. He did not listen to the words of Nico from the mouth of God, from the mouth of God, but came to fight in the plain of Megiddo." Okay, so we see a mountain and a plain named Megiddo. By the way, the Battle of Armageddon that we see mentioned in Revelations chapter 16, is it a physical battle, do you think? Spiritual Say battle. it again. The Battle of Armageddon that we see referenced in Revelations chapter 16, do you think this is a physical battle? Probably not. Probably not. If it's not a physical battle, what is it? Spiritual. spiritual. It, bingo. It's a spiritual battle. The battle that is mentioned here, there is no physical army of God that's mentioned. The battle that is about to take place is a spiritual battle between the forces of good and evil. The battle and its outcome that are pictured here as being ready to take place actually occur later on in chapter 19. In reference to our study of revelations, the truth is the battle has already occurred. God already knows what is going to happen. Revelations chapter 16, Revelations chapter 16, verse 17, and Giselle, that's you, please unmute. Unmute, please, yourself. I can't unmute her. Giselle, unmute. 
There you go. You're unmuted, Giselle. Okay. Revelation, sir. Chapter 16, verse 17. Verse 17. 17. Revelation 16, verse 17. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple from the throne, saying, it is done. Okay. Verse 18, please, Chrissy. And there... Eighteen says, and there were flashes of lightnings, lightnings, rumblings, pearls, peals of thunders, and a great earthquake, such as there had never been seen, man was on the earth. So great was the earthquake. Okay, so what we see here is the seventh bowl of judgment is now being poured out against the evil spirits of wickedness. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, please, Mary Faye. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. So the spirit that is in work in those who are disobedient, disobedient to whom? To God, right? Yes. As we go back to verse 16, verse 17 in chapter 16 of Revelations, we see it is done. This is a Greek perfect tense here that is used in reference to the pouring out of this judgment the judgment that has already begun. The results were continuing even as John sees and writes the book of Revelations. All that is left is the conclusion that God has set things into motion. Thunder and lightning, these are God's judgment. These are signs of his judgments, of his presence. We see this in Revelations 4, Revelation 6. We saw it in the book of Genesis. The righteous recognize the presence of God in the judgments that God pours out on humanity. They understand that they may have to endure hardship as God pours out his judgment on the nations in which they live. And they accept the judgments because they realize that God is working. In fact, let's take a look at the verse that I'm going to use for that. Uh, Marvin, grab us Romans 8.28. Do you know it by heart yet? No, no sir. Romans. Who's, who's got it memorized? Give me a hand. Chrissy. Let's hear you, Chrissy. Romans 8.28 says... And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. All right. Give her a round. Good job. <laughs> good job, Chrissy. But we realize that things may be hard for us. The world around us may be collapsing. However, we are aware that all things work together for the good of those who love God, right? Revelation 16, 19. Marvin, you can have that one. Revelation 16, 19 says, The great city was split into three parts, and the, sea, uh, and the cities of the nations fell, and that God remembered Bab Babylon the great to make her drain the cup of the wine of the fury of his wrath. What we see here is the great city was split or divided, depending on which translation you're reading. This great city is Rome. And all of the cities that have given their allegiance to Rome against the saints of God. We saw this in Revelations chapter 11, verse 8, Revelations 11, verse 13, Revelations 14, 8, and elsewhere. When God brought judgment on the heart of the empire, 
all of the other cities dried up. The judgment that God is pouring out here against the empire of the world, the judgments have come because of her state-sponsored persecution of the people of God. These are end-time judgments. However, at the end of times, God's judgment will go out to all the world, not just to a single empire such as Rome. Revelations chapter 16, verse 20. Revelations chapter 16, verse 20. Ramon, you want that? Twenty. Twenty, please. Chapter twenty, verse. Romans chapter. Oh, sorry, Revelations chapter sixteen, verse twenty. Every island fled away, and the mountains could not be found. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give us 21 to go with that, Ramon. From the sky, huge hailstones of about 100 pounds, it fell upon men. And the course God on account of the plague of hail, because, of pla of, because the plague was so terrible. Okay. I want you to think about this. If blocks of ice weighing 50 kilos started falling out of the sky, and you got hit by one, what would happen to you? You're dead. You're dead, right? You're the dead. Physic your physical life has ended. And what we see here is that every island fled away. All the extensions or the tributaries of the Roman Empire vanished when the empire came to its end. The subsidy or governments that leaned upon them, they stood because at the strength of the empire also vanished with the fall of Rome. God set his judgment against the heart of the empire and the rest of the empire collapsed around it. Heaven, heaven is symbolic of God's judgment upon these governments that would set themselves against the work of God much as he set his heart against Egypt, Exodus chapter 9, verse 23, Exodus chapter 9, verse 23, Miss Wilma. Chapter 9, verse, Exodus chapter 9, verse, Exodus chapter 9, verse 23. Then Moses stretched out his staff toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and fire ran down to the earth. So we see the and, thunder and the hail, right? And the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. That's does this not parallel what's happening at the end of times in Revelations? Psalm 78, verse 47, Cora. Unmute, please. 47, please. Psalm 78, verse 47, it says. 47. It says, he destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore figs with slit. Okay. God you has used hail in this judgment before. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 2. Isaiah chapter. Katrina? Isaiah 28 and 2. Isaiah 28 and 2. Behold, the Lord has one who is mighty and strong, like a storm of hail, a destroying tempest, like a strong, like a, a storm of mighty, overflowing waters. He cast down to the earth with his hand. 
storm of hail, right? God is powerful. Giselle, give us Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 30, please. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. What verse, sir? 30. 30. Okay. What I want to say. And the Lord will cause his majestic voice to be heard and the descent, descending blow of his arm to be seen. In furious anger and a flame of devouring fire with a cloud burst and storms and hailstone. So it's all going to be, it's all coming to an end with hailstones, right? Ezekiel yes. that chapter 13. Verse 11, please, Chrissy. Ezekiel 11, verse 13 says, and it, and it came 13, to pass. Chapter 13, verse 11. 13, 11. Ah, 13, 11. Verse 11. Ezekiel 13, verse 11. Say to those who smear it with white wash that it shall fall. There will be a, deli a deluge of rain, and you, O great hailstone, will fall, and a stormy wind break out. Here, what we see is that John emphasizes, going back to Revelations chapter 16, John emphasizes the gravity of the wrath of God that is poured out upon the wicked government. Then, by the way, governments that set their course against his people. Men blaspheme God. Here, against the religiously self-defeat, deceived who refuse to recognize the judgment is from the God of heaven. They assign these tragedies to the judgments of God to be the work of Satan in their lives because they attribute the work of God to forces of the devil. They would not repent in response to the judgments of God. The visions of the bowls has now ended. And John moves us into the fall of Rome and its imperial religion. God has unleashed the judgments of natural disasters, of internal deterioration, and of external invasions in order to bring about the fall of the empire. And I'm going to give you guys back a few minutes because we will pick up in chapter 17 next week.